Oh, what's this? Another episode of F1 2015 career mode? You're damn right it is. It's part 14 here from Japan. Suzuka this time out. Championship standings on the right there. You see we're in a good position for the time being. Hamilton behind us. We are P1 in the championship as Max Verstappen. As we're going to be heading onto the Suzuka track very shortly for qualifying. So, as we can't be asked to watch the entire intro we're going to cut straight into the qualifying and our first banker lap here coming around the final corner setting a 37.3 dead enough for provisional pole position at this stage as we then go on to a second lap at the end of the session however the game decided to give me some sort of weird force feedback glitch with the wheel which went every time i turned more than 20 degrees of the way the force feedback went mental and it tried it was vibrating like crazy and tried to leap off my desk and out the window so whilst I was trying to tame that, I wasn't able to go quicker, and then to add salt into the wound, Rosberg, just like in Singapore, has managed to get ahead of us to start on pole position. But it's another front row start for us, nevertheless, ahead of Hamilton, our main championship rival, which is key. As you can see, the full run down there, Rosberg just annihilating everyone. We are P2, Hamilton a fraction behind in P3, and then the two Ferraris behind. So that's qualifying over and done with, really. So we need to make sure we get a decent start for this, the Japanese Grand Prix. It's race time, and I'm not going to do the rest of x Major's intro. The clouds have come in, the rain may be falling, I can't really tell at this stage, but it is going to be crucial, and obviously without the ability to see what's happening with the weather in advance, in terms of the forecast, it's pretty up in the air as what's going to be happening. The race strategy is going to be, well, it's saying a three stop, so whether it's going to be you know, sticking to that for that fresher tyre feel during the race, or trying to minimise the pit stops, maybe do one less stop and see how bad the time loss is at the end of those those stints there where you're on really worn tyres compared to fresh tyres. But we'll see as the race unfolds. But for now, we are heading out onto the track. P2, clear right ahead apart from Rosberg on the left. Five lights are on, and away they go. And oh my god, it's an awful start. Oh, bye Hamilton, goodbye. Oh, here come the Ferraris, bye. Goodbye to them as well. Oh, and Bottas, make it stop, please. As we go into turn one, we're going to cut them nicely. We're now getting really tight with Vettel on the exit. We're squeezing him out Hamilton esque style. Get absolutely banged on Vettel. Teaching you a lesson, son. But that's us back into P3 as Mercedes are already looking to bore off into the distance at this early stage already. As you can see, it looks like there is a bit of moisture in the air. There's a few sort of effects going on in the car, even though I can't actually see any physical rain in the air. So that's interesting to say the least. But yes, it's not looking good for our. Uh, our actual pace compared to Mercedes, they have sodded off, and that is quite clearly a word, sodded. But yes, here we go, end of lap one, as you see the Mercedes, 39 threes from them, a 41 three from us, that's a couple of seconds already, and now Vettel looking around the outside of us into turn one, we're not having any of it though, we've just got to pick a, po pick a point to break, we've managed to do that well, Vettel's run off wide and we've held P3 for now, as we need to try and settle into a rhythm. But as we try and do so, the end of lap two, you can see the rain a lot more having more of an effect in terms of the conditions and you can see just the understeer is abysmal just honestly what is that all about but up ahead Hamilton looking to make a move on Rosberg we're having to defend from Vettel as Hamilton looks to go up the inside of Rosberg into 130 we're defending from Vettel we've managed to keep that position Vettel runs off the track and as the two Mercedes ahead have switched positions we've caught right up to the back of them now so let's see can we keep up with them, or at least Rosberg perhaps, see what Hamilton's pace is like in the dry, or in the dry, in the clear I should say. And as you can see, he has cleared off, Hamilton not interested in battling in second place. Rosberg on the other hand, slow as fuck as we got the inside of him into 130R. Obviously the clouds have come in, the rain has built, and the wind must have picked up some serious amounts because Rosberg is nowhere. He's now under pressure from Vettel and possibly even losing out on the podium spot at this rate. But now it's going to be seeing what we can do against Hamilton. It does a 39-1. We've done a 40.1, so only a second slower, but that is not going to do us any favour in terms of trying to catch him. And as you can see, a few laps down the line with the conditionings, conditionings? conditions worsening, Hamilton with over four seconds in his pocket now. As the tyres, we're ready in no man's land. See, it looks like Hamilton has pitted, but it just doesn't seem as if it's quite right for intermediates. So the, the condition didn't seem to have changed much over the last few laps, but. It must have been time for him to the AI pitted. Our tyres were absolutely gone, but we didn't really know what to do. So we stand, set out for an extra lap to see what happens. And as you can see, coming into the first couple of corners now, there is just absolutely no grip. The back end is gone. That's been a bad mistake to stay out. As we may, do make it round the lap, 
not particularly quickly. I think in the middle sector we lost about two seconds to Hamilton already in just that one sector alone. So as we now come into pit for intermediates, we're going to be, the main goal is to try and actually stay ahead of Vettel. Hamilton's going to be completely gone. You can see him crossing the line there. He's going to be long gone, but the car now coming around that final corner and approaching the line is Sebastian Vettel. We need to try and remain ahead of him for this next stint of the race. You can see it's going to be very, very close, but it looks like we've just got track position. But instead of fitting intermediates to my car, the Torosu pit crew have decided to pit, pit to put four blocks of ice, a block each on each corner, as you can see there. Just absolutely no grip. I have no idea what, what this is all about. I mean, I think I lower the tyre pressure, so I don't know if that's something to do with. Obviously, I know they're cold as they first come out the blanket, but the tyre warm-up was just so slow. And even on the uh, the previous tyres, the... Uh, the dries there's just no tire temperature again and obviously now i guess you could say yes it should be like that because it's wet but who knows i think that was something to do with it though and as you can see we're really struggling for the tire temperature now and hamilton clearing off eight seconds up the road vettel is p3 behind us but we have remained in p2 for now which is good as over the next few laps nothing really happened except for at the start of lap 14 where the ai looked to pit um or at least some of them did for another set of intermediates However, only a couple of laps later, obviously our intermediates were completely gone, we managed to get P1 thanks to them pitting and we're now coming in for a set of dry prime tyres. Conditions have been getting slightly better as the laps, last few laps have gone on and obviously doing that extra lap of the first stint, staying out for this stint as well as long as possible has allowed us, hopefully, to just do this one pit stop now back onto prime tyres and that should be us going through to the end of the race unless anything else happens 4.1 seconds we don't really know what Toro so decided to do they also just making sure they're not fitting blocks of ice again and actually fitting proper race tyres on but I'm happy enough with their work we've remained in P1 as the cars behind have all pitted for dry tyres as well so now it's just a race to the end we've got track position we just need to get these tyres up to temperature manage the gap to Hampton as best we can and then hopefully prevent him from passing as no doubt he will catch us as the Mercedes has most certainly had the pace throughout this track and this race so best part probably a second a lap faster when they're pushing when they're cruising we're pretty much the same speed but we're just never at any point really any quicker than them as you see tyres warming up a lot better than the intermediates did which is good um, Hamilton has remained in P2 see our closest championship rival as we've got a sab up ahead it doesn't look to be posing too many problems now so we just need to see how much of a gap we've got to Hamilton to last until the end of this race and it's a gap of 6.3 seconds that we need to manage for the remaining 11 laps However, as we then look forward to on a few laps, you can see how we've, we've crossed the set time, Hamilton hasn't. I don't know whether he's stopped to pick up some hair dye products, whether he's trying to you know, call a fan who's not picking up the phone for him. But the gap now 17.8 seconds, and this is the reason why. So no hair products in, uh, in sight, no, no, no mobiles or no fans ignoring the call. It's actually a stray Sauber who he's, Hamilton's decided to crash into. So bravo, oh my Christ. A Williams had nearly been launched into Narnia as Hamilton decides to crash into the back of the Sauber once more for good measure. Uh, but that's his front wing gone. That is mega for this race and the, well, could be mega for the championship. And Sebastian Vettel chilling in third, passing all the debris, thinking what the hell is going on? Why is Hamilton blowing up? Up ahead is a Sauber. We navigate him all right. And then in the gravel recovering is a Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton who we've just about managed to survive being killed by as he returns to the track. But that is us into P1. You see the blue skies have appeared, the rain has completely cleared off, Alonso's making things very sketchy. And at this stage, because the AI had actually, I think Vettel was on options on that previous clip, I'm not entirely sure, I wasn't really paying attention, but because he was on options, he's pitted again, as has Rosberg. So we've got over a half a minute gap, and with our tyres being extremely warm, enough of a gap back to those guys, and also having a few cars behind us who had just pitted that we just sort of lapped the lap on the, the previous lap, they were much quicker and doing an annoying thing of sort of being quicker, passing us, letting us back through and then being quicker and trying to overtake again. So avoid all that confusion. We've come into the pit lane, put on a set of option tyres for the last couple of laps. We're going to get out ahead of Sebastian Vettel, remain in P1 for the last few laps and we should be pretty untouchable for these final few laps as that's Grosjean thankfully coming down the pit lane and not Sebastian Vettel. But Sebastian Vettel still not crossing the pit lane. Oh, there we go. So he has crossed the line now. So a comfortable gap there, 29.4. Actually, that might have been in the second set I don't really know but either way it didn't really matter we had enough of a gap to hold on for the race win nine seconds and the final lap and to make a cheesy crofty pun it's max points for Max Verstappen here at Suzuka so a pretty entertaining race strategy wise we called it absolutely perfect 
the entertainment in terms of overtaking wasn't particularly there however the strategy effect was pretty mega so that extra lap of the first stint staying out on the inters till it was just time to pit for primes was a pretty good call really minimizing our pit stops and that has helped us to the top step of the podium so here are the celebrations on the podium which i've decided not to skip again because i'm a bit of an idiot and i'm pretty sure everyone at this stage is completely fucked off with them because they're boring as hell no interaction as hell wouldn't it be good if you could like you know, use the left analog stick to walk around and use the right analog stick to you know sort of charge up the champagne and then you know press a button to you know spray it wherever and things like that but no nope, nothing like that in the games so instead we just watch it being bored um, but there are the results P1 for Max Verstappen. Main point that I need to show you here is Lewis Hamilton down in sixth place, our main championship rival, only scoring eight po eight paints, eight points today in this Grand Prix, which is going to be mega for the championship. Another good points haul for us here. Only uh, well, NASA managing to find finish behind someone who DNF'd. Oh, Alonso well, DNF'd. There's a shock. Nice engine. Um, but yeah, there you go. That has been the Suzuka Grand Prix, the Japanese Grand Prix. Um, as you see, our fastest lap four seconds slower than Nico Rosberg. That's almost impressive to still finish nine seconds ahead of him. But we have done, and that's what it means for the championship. 28 points is the difference now over a race win distance. That is crucial as we go into the last sort of, what's that, five races, I think. Um, but thank you very much for watching. I do very much appreciate it. I do hope to finish this, this season and see if we can can crown Max Verstappen as the Formula 1 World Championship. Until the next episode, thank you for watching, hit that like button, and I'll see you next time.